Okay, so it looks like this is recording. Um, I am going to show you all how to make a friction fire with uh, the bow drill method using uh, yucca. Um, this is for my friend Nolan, who has been curious about this uh, from the Southern California area. So yucca is pretty prevalent there, but it's also pretty much everywhere in the U.S. as it's become an ornamental and as suburbs and middle class people tend to take over wild lands and build subdivisions there. They plant all kinds of invasive species, starting with their children and ending with yucca. Um, so, I'm going to use um, yucca for my hearth board and my spindle. And uh, this right here, what I'm doing is creating a tender nest. Uh, this is western red cedar uh, bark. Um, looks like this comes in long strips and you can peel it directly off of the tree without causing damage to the tree as long as you're responsible and ethically with how you want to harvest. Uh, what I'm doing is taking a strip of it and uh, you can see it's somewhat pliable um, but what, what it is it's layers and layers of bark. It's real thin layers and what I do is I bend it around my thumb and move my hand down and it comes off with thin strips like this. So I'm getting these long thin strips peel off and then I twisted them around and bound them into a small bundle and stepped in some dry grass, uh, there's a, a bird feather in there, uh, a little bit of moss. This is going to be my tender bundle. Uh, this is what yucca looks like um, right here. This is the stalk of the yucca. You can see how it's uh, it's got these spindly small wisps coming off here. Um, this is what the green yucca leaf looks like. If you're not familiar, it's also a very good leaf for cordage, and I'll talk about that in another video. But this leaf is essentially made of long strips of fiber that are perfect for cordage. You can actually use the cordage to make a bow drill with. Uh, but this is the the, uh, the stalk of the yucca. This is what we're going to be using for both the spindle and the hearth board. Um, I already have one made. You can see here. Essentially what I did was I took my knife and I cut into segments. Um, for my spindle, I wanted something that is about the width of my hand from my pinky to my thumb. That's a good size spindle. And for the width of it, you want it to be between, again, it's the width of your pinky or the width of your thumb. It's really no bigger than your thumb and no smaller than your pinky. Um, so that's a good gauge. There's your spindle. I've taken my knife and taken the bark off the outside because sometimes bark can um, get in the way of a good ignition process with your dust that's going to be forming from the friction. So, um, and then to make the hearth board, I simply took my knife, split right down the middle of the, of the piece, creating a flat edge, took my spindle and pushed it down in to create a divot. And then I set about making a, the hole first. What I'm using for my bow drill is it's a, it's a simple kit. This is a piece of bamboo. Um, it's an aged piece of bamboo I found in the yard. And my string, I'm using a piece of leather that I've twisted. You can use buckskin. You can use upholstery leather. Um, you can also use any any sort of string, shoe strings, paracord. 550 is good. Um, but this, uh, I found to be a really great material because um, it stretches um, just a little bit, giving you the ability to control with your thumb a little easier the tension that you're going to be placing on the spindle. Um, I've also wrapped the, the rest of the handle with the remaining leather. And the way I got this leather string was I took a square piece of raw, of, pardon me, not raw hide, of tan leather and cut a spiral um, pattern out of it, leaving a strip about uh, between a quarter and a half inch wide stretched that out and twisted it into a piece of single twist cordage. Um, for my bearing block I'm using the knee bone of a deer uh, that was found out in the desert of Nevada. Um, this was found when we were uh, on a trip. You'll find these a lot of times in the woods. If you can't get some from the woods um, you can go to a butcher and get ask for pig's knee bones anything like that. It's great because it's got this natural divot. It's already in it. It's perfect. But otherwise, you can use uh, hardwood. Um, you can use a stone with a divot. You can also probably use a skateboard wheel with the ball bearing still inside. I haven't tried that yet, but I thought, thought of doing it. So 
At any rate, we're ready to rock. So I take my spindle and I insert it like that into my bow. Oh, your bow, you want that to be about the length from your fingertip of your middle finger to your elbow. Uh, that's going to give you the, a good amount of length that's not too long um, for creating the uh, friction that you need. What I'm doing now, um, can you tilt that down just a little bit? Okay. So, um, to get my to get this this divot that I need, what I'm going to do is bore a little a little spot in, and then I need to prep that uh, as such. Now, when you're doing this, what you want to do is you want to get your your foot as close to the divot that you're going to create as possible and lock your wrist to your shin like so and this keeps you from moving around a lot uh, the purpose for that is the friction needs to remain um, somewhat static in one spot to create uh, the heat that you need and every bit of air that gets in is going to cool that down you don't want that you do need oxygen but you don't need oxygen on this part quite yet um, and I'll explain how that's going to happen so what I would then do is I would then go about just slowly spinning this across to create a little divot and then I would take a knife and I would cut a pie slice that goes nearly to the center of that divot out from the corner. I've already done that on one and that's the one we're going to start on. One more element you're going to need and you can use some more of your cedar bark for this or you can use uh, a leaf if you'd like but you're going to need to create a barrier between the ground and your hearth board for a couple reasons. Um, this is going to create um, a barrier from the moisture that's going to come from the ground that will also cool your ash. It's also going to create a little scoop for your hot ember. So you place that directly underneath your hole that you've already bored out right there. And that's what's going to catch all of your dust that's going to be created. So let's get on that real quick. So as I'm doing this, what I want to do when I start out is I would like I want to get a small pile of dust forming in that notch. So I don't need to to bore in real fast, real quick. You don't want to wear yourself out. Yucca has the benefit of being a very easy to ignite plant. So as I'm as I'm moving here, I'm getting some dust forming. That's what you want. You want this notch to fill up with dust. So now we're ready to bore in and get ember. What I'm doing is tucking my thumb behind my cord. This is giving me the ability to add or release pressure as I need uh, the, the tension to be greater or lesser. Um, pushing down my bearing block, I don't want to slam it down, just hold it in place essentially. You want to move along the entire length of the bowstring and you'll start to see smoke. When you start seeing smoke, it doesn't mean stop. Actually, push it on a little harder. And once you get the smoke going, you've got an ember now. Now, you don't need to rush this. A lot of times people think that you need to hurry up and do this. You actually want to let this sit for a second. To let the, uh, the dust collect into a larger ember. Take this over. Move it into your tinder bundle. Pick this up and begin to blow. Well, okay, so I seem to have lost my coal. That happens, so we'll get it going one more time for you. See, this isn't, uh, this isn't like the TV shows where they start spinning a stick and it bursts into flames. It's not reality. The reality of it is sometimes you're going to have to try many times. So, start again. Get our dust pile for me. And then rock into it.
There's a twin. So, get out there. So that's the Bojo fire with the yucca. Um, now, don't be fooled by that. Other plants are going to be infinitely harder to use. The yucca is quite simple. It gives you about a 200 degree ignition point, uh, and that's that's relatively low, extremely low actually, for most plants you're going to find. But there it is, Bojo fire. Um, Thanks a lot for watching. I know there's a lot of these videos on there, but um, you know, the more of us that practice and try these things, uh, the better off we're all going to be. I you, I do recommend <laughs> practicing this at least three times a week because um, in your backyard is fine. But uh, you know, the more practice you have, the more fluidity you're going to have, and the better off you're going to be in the bush. May the forest be with you.